Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist and today I wanted to make a video about um, the new nodes that I've added to update my Geometry Nodes asset collection which is available for free on my Gumroad page. The theme of this update is trees and vegetation I guess. I've been going through a bunch of my project files trying to pull out useful node groups and turn them into an asset that you can drag and drop that I can drag and drop into my scenes um, and hopefully you can find them useful too. So these are all, uh, this adds seven new nodes. Um, three of them are kind of generic. They're just to do with curves and selecting parts of curves or setting the radius on a curve. And then four of them are specifically focused on creating trees. Um, the first one, the tree generator, makes a whole tree. That's what you're seeing here. And then the other three are sort of the building blocks which you could put in your own node group to make a customized plant of some sort. Um, I named it Tree Generator, but I think you could probably use it to make a lot of different kinds of plants. Also, just as a note about what it is, I specifically made it to make low poly trees for my game project. So I didn't intend for the trees to be seen up close. Um, all of the resolutions and stuff are configurable, so theoretically you could tweak it to make a really high poly tree. Uh, these trees all only branch two or three times. Um, you could make a tree that branched five, six seven times, you know, as long as your computer can handle it and you'd get a much more detailed looking tree. By default, it makes a low poly tree. So I guess first thing, since we have it right here, we can take a quick look at the tree generator itself. This is one kind of tree. I guess the first thing we can see is just by changing the leaves. We can, or we can create a different tree just by tweaking the settings. So here I just changed the, the branches or the, the leaves and we get sort of very different looking trees. Um, so it does require some input. These are the examples of the, the first tree, sort of the big bushy looking leaves. And then these are, as another example, this is um, more branch-like. I'd say that the this one, the more branch-like one, probably looks a little better in profile. And the, the bushier looking one maybe looks a little bit better from above. I don't know, it's really up to you. So just to take a look at the tree generator, the first thing we have here is a seed value that just creates different trees if you change it. The second thing we have is resolution, which lets you change how many loops there are sort of cut into the tree vertically. So if we turn it all the way down, it gets really, really simple. And if you turn it up, it gets more and more dense. Um, the third thing is the height control. It sort of scales the tree vertically or controls how tall the tree can grow. And then we have the twistiness, which is sort of how kinked is the trunk. That kind of gets out of control if you turn it too high. Um, then there's this tree, tree generator. The trunk can, the first thing it does is it decides if it's gonna split the trunk or not. So you can control how far up the tree that split happens. Then we have a probability for the split, that's for every segment of the trunk. What's the chance that it will that it will split on that segment? Then there's split length, which just says if there is a split, how far off of the trunk should we grow? Then there's split bend, which basically scales between growing in the direction the trunk was growing and then bending over to the ground. You can see if we turn this up, it bends down more. Then all of the options there were for split, there's those options again for branch. So the trees in sort of three tiers, there's the trunk, then there's the splits, then there's the branches, and then there's the leaves. If you made a custom tree generator, you could you can control how many levels of each of those there are. Um, so we got the same settings here. How likely is there to be a branch on each part? Um, how far should those grow? And then how much should those bend? And then you can pick your, your leaf object. So if we pick branch, it looks different. If we pick leaves, so that's a collection of these objects over here. And then you can choose how many. So on this, a low val, this is the, this, the leaf density controls the spacing on the point, on scattering points. So a low value puts many instances and a high value puts fewer instances and then you can scale the instances. So that's the tree generator. It, um, 
It's a quick solution. You can just drag it in and it makes a tree, but it gives you the least flexibility in customizing it. Um, the tree generator is made of these three subcomponents. So you can see here we have a trunk generation. We select some parts of that. We do some branch generation, select some parts of those branches, do some more branch generation. Then we take all of that up here, solidify it so that it's a mesh. Then we take all of it down here and select the ends of it, merge it all together and spawn leaves on it. Um, that's the tree generator. So it uses all of these, it uses these three sub nodes. If you want to make your own custom tree generator, you can reuse these sub nodes in your own node tree. So I'll show you real quick how that could work. You just have a mesh. It's going to replace the mesh entirely. The tree grows from the origin point of your object. If we make a new node tree here, then um, we can put a trunk generator in it. If we look at that, then we can see we get this curve here. We can put that in a join. Then we can select some random parts of that. We can put that into a branch generator. Join those together. We could make them a little bit bendier. Then we could uh, select some random parts of the branches, do some branches on the branches, and then join those together as well. And so you can kind of see you can just chain them together and, and it builds these curves. And then all you have to do is, um, for each of those parts, solidify the curves however makes sense. And then you can use the leaf instancer to spawn objects on the ends of them. So that's the setup. Um, the mo the Probably the most powerful way to use it is to build your own tree using the components. Um, or there's the, tr the tree generator if that's the type of tree that you want right out the box. For just a quick look at the other nodes that I added here, um, the first one is the quadratic radius. We had a solidify here. Um, um, so you probably, want, if you're drawing a curve in edit mode, you probably want to evaluate the curve because um, then it can set a radius on. So if you don't evaluate a curve, this curve has three control points that all have a radius. If you check the evaluate curve checkbox, then it lets you set the radius on each point of the evaluated curve, which which allows it to more closely follow the shape you define. Then you just have four radius values you can set, and the first one and the first one will be applied at the beginning of the curve. The second one will be applied a quarter of the way or a third of the way through the curve, two thirds of the way through, and then at the end. And then those radius values will be smoothly interpolated between across the curve. So we could turn this middle one way up, turn the end down, and it just makes the radius smooth and transition nicely. All right, then the second one is the select random. And what it does is it just, you give it a probability and then there's that chance for it to pick every edge in the output curve, basically. So that's um, so the way I use that um, here is it's used in the branch generator, or in the, well, it's used in the tree generator to pick places for the branch generator to create branches. Um, so this would be a branch. This would be a branch. Ah, this would be a branch, etc. Um, besides that, there's probably other uses, but you'll just have to come up with creative ways to use it. And then the third one is curve select range. And it's pretty simple. What it does is it just allows you to select a range of a curve. So we can check from, we can select from 0.2 to 0.75 um, or whatever. That is essentially the same as the curve trim node. Um, the main difference is it uses separate geometry and that lets you have the inverse of what you trimmed. Um, trim curve does work a little bit better because this only works on the evaluated curve. So if you wanted, if for some reason you wanted to be really precise and trim to right here in between, you can't. The closest you can get is here or here. But um, but yeah, the advantage is if you don't care about being that precise, but you do want to be able to use the part of the curve that got removed. Um, for some reason you care about this part and not the middle, 
it allows you to do that. All right, so that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Um, these are all my nodes. Um, there are a few new ones and a number of changes, updates, so nodes that were already in the asset collection. I'll make a video about those updates at some point. Um, if there's any of the nodes that you'd like a detailed explanation of how they work, uh, just let me know. I'm happy to make a video about them. The whole node collection is available on my Gumroad page. Um, it's free, and if you find it useful and want to give me something for it, I always appreciate that as well. I do have some more node groups that I'm trying to get organized into assets and put into a workflow that makes sense and is consistent and stuff. Um, they're sort of related to arrays and instancing and creating parts of buildings and things like that. So that'll probably be the next thing. But yeah, hopefully you found this useful and interesting. Um, if you have a preference on how detailed I get with the node trees, like whether I go through every single node or build it from scratch or um, just do sort of a high level overview like I did in this one, um, I'd be interested in knowing uh, what people prefer. But um, yeah, that's it for now. So thanks for watching.